Tell him now, SA Rugby Magazine editor Mark Kiohane. You called them all last weekend, and I came close, <laughs> but not close enough. <sighs> I have to shake your hand, admit <laughs> Leicester were shite, and Leicester were great. We got so, the goals right. Yeah, and then the, the comment there is, how good is the Premiership, and uh, just how bad is the United Rugby Championship? Leicester have pumped everyone this season. Their pack went nowhere. Uh, the Leinster pack, outstanding. Johnny Sexton, outstanding. Uh, 24-13 could have been 50-13. It was a demolition job in the first 40. I can't see anyone stopping Leinster in the United Rugby Championship or in the Champions Cup. Your comments there. I can. I'm going to say La Rochelle is going to not only win this weekend, but they're going to win the European Champions Cup. La who? La Rochelle. La Rochelle. <laughs> uh, you've been on the phone to Dylan Leinster. <laughs> I'm in rule been, again, have I you? I have been. Okay, we'll get to that now. But let's just... Let's just let Leinster bask in their yeah. glory a bit. That side hadn't played uh, for a fortnight. That side had pumped Connacht by 50 points to 20-odd. Uh, they'd been rested, those players. Yep. For those not in the know, 22 of the 23 players didn't play in Cape Town when the Stormers won 2013 against Leinster, which emphasizes the depth that Leinster so has on. built, very much like the Crusaders of old built in Super Rugby. Uh, a prime example of what South African teams have to do going forward Extended squad to run a parallel kind of campaign if you are playing in the United Rugby Championships Smart. and we're playing either in the Challenge Cup or in the Champions Cup. It's going to demand that. But for now, Irish rugby, uh, a huge boost uh, for the Irish game, for the national team as well. They'll play Toulouse in the, in the semi-final. Uh, uh, Toulouse, who just got through against Ulster. Uh, they won on aggregate by a point. 24 all against Munster at the Aviva. It went into extra time. 100 minutes. Uh, couldn't separate them. Uh, then they went into a kicking contest. They gave three kickers nominated from each side. I really feel for Ben Healy, the 22-year-old from Munster. He had an opportunity to win the game in the 81st minute. 56-metre penalty. He was just short. He had an opportunity to win in the 100th minute with a drop goal just short he took the second kick he missed he took the fourth kick he missed <laughs> i mean it just wasn't his day you have written a column on sa rugby magazine zells you believe that the three player each kick out is nonsense no. and you feel it should have been decided in a different way yes look i know you're not a big fan of their suggestion but i don't think that a penalty shootout is good for rugby i think it is a holdover from soccer it feels like a holdover from football um, so I just footballed a potential solution, which would be to have uh, each team at the end of extra time, if it is still drawn, each team gets a crack from the 22 left-hand scrum. You've got one series to score a try or to score points. Uh, if you get it right and your opponents get their shot and don't score, you win. And if they do score, you go to a second attempt. Both teams get another scrum on the 22, and we, we keep going for that. So basically, the match will be decided by some sort of set-piece strike play. I've seen that in rugby league. It's called six touch, okay? Very so, <laughs> six touch. And that could go on forever if you've got two teams well, that just gone score. Well. Uh, look, I've always believed, just play till, the, play till there's an infringement. There will be a penalty. Yeah. Uh, any referee can he probably wants to get, get out of there. He can probably blow that game for anything. Post the 100 minutes, that game will be decided in, in, the, in the first. It's called the golden, the golden point. Uh, in rugby league, they tried it in super rugby as well. It was successful. Either a penalty or a try. Team who scores next actually wins. Mm. And uh, and I don't think there should be extra time. Mm. I think you should I'm go good. straight into the golden rule. I after agree. after the eighty minutes, I agree. first team who scores wins the game. Munster had it at twenty four fourteen. Their pack just wasn't good enough to lose. It's like you just get the sense they're playing their get out of uh, jail cards all the time. Mm. Uh, but uh, to come up against the three Irish provinces. Uh, it shows there's not a hell of a lot between between the two nations at the moment, but the French sides are riding high. I was going to say, I mean, let's talk about France. How many teams they had well, in the quarterfinals? They've got three. They've got three in the semi-finals. They've got two in the Challenge Cup finals. So top fourteen, uh, obviously a very strong tournament, but there's also a huge uh, international contingent that also plays in those teams. Yeah. Um, but Ireland, I mean, Leinster pretty much replicate what's all all that's good about the Irish yes. team. So kudos to Leinster. I've given, I gave them a bit of stick by saying they sent a weakened, inexperienced side to South Africa. They didn't get the two wins. That's what I was talking about. They've got to send their best side to win in South Africa. Um, but that best side, I think, can win in South Africa at the moment and certainly will win at home. Yeah. But I thought they were outstanding. I really enjoyed the Munster to lose game. Um, um, it's, I would have loved it if it was a Thorman Park. Uh, and I think Munster would have, that passion would have taken Absolutely. over. Aviva... 
it's uh, you know it's it's three hours up the up the up the road. It is really more home to Leinster than it is to Munster. And I said to you when we found out the game was being played at Aviva because of Ed Sheeran that it's a bit like asking the Bulls to go to the old Newlands and win. <laughs> uh, it's not quite the same as playing at Loftus. But I really loved the weekend of Champions yeah, Cup fabulous. and Challenge Cup football. Yeah. And then I looked at Super Rugby and I thought, oh God, I don't know. Eh? I, that felt like Test Rugby and the other one looked a bit like basketball. The Blues, 14 points against him, 66 for them, 14 against him, 71-28. Does the game no justice there. The Crusaders get another 50. I think the only game of relevance there this weekend, Brumbies up against the Crusaders yep. in Canberra. Brumbies knocked them over. They will have knocked, played four New Zealand teams and won four, yes. which Ian Foster will then be looking and saying, well, it shows that Dave Rennie can put together a half-decent side for the Wallabies. But that competition not doing a hell of a lot for me at the moment. No, I agree 100%. I think uh, it's fantastic to see the, the Australian teams putting up a bit of a fight. Whether that's because they've improved or the Kiwis are getting worse, I don't know. Um, but again, good to see the Australia sort of bouncing back a little bit. I expect this weekend, though, the Crusaders uh, will draw the sword and, uh, and hack the Brumbies to pieces. I think the Br- Crusaders are going to pick their strongest side and have a good go against them. Well, they have uh, picked their strongest side, Zal. I can inform you as the editor of SR Rugby Magazine. Thanks, Mark. There are 11 internationals in go. the starting 15. There we go. All the All Blacks are back. And, and Pablo Motero is there, of course, <laughs> uh, on the flank. And uh, so 11 of them. And a couple of good ones on the bench as well. Uh, that big beast of a centre win. What's his name? Uh, Pronounce it. Fanganaku. Lester Fanganaku. Lester. We'll just call him Lester. Could have done with him in England. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the bench. Uh, I see George Bridges on the wing. Uh, Jack Goody is back in the centres with David Avili, who's the vice captain. Uh, it's the best uh, side that Scott Robertson could pick. Be interesting. They struggle in Canberra. Uh, it, you know, it says a lot about what the All Blacks are going to bring to the party because oh, it's a Scott Barrett. It's a white log. Absolutely. Cody Taylor, to Richie Mohanga, no. uh, those players will be playing for the All Blacks. Mm. So if there's one to look out for this weekend, that's definitely it. But let's go back to, that, uh, to, to Europe where it's all happening. Remember, there's no United Rugby Championship this week. It restarts again next weekend with our team's travel for the last round of the URC. Yep. And victories there will take us potentially into home quarterfinals. But we're definitely three of our teams in the quarterfinals that will take place the following week. Uh, and then it's semi-final time, and hopefully a final. One of our teams in Dublin at the Aviva Stadium against Leinster, because I'm sure they'll be there. Looking at, we've said, to lose, to go down. Are we in agreement there? Yes, definitely. To lose, to go down, to Leicester, <laughs> by how much? Um, I, I'm going to take, uh, Sound like Giovanni I'm gonna take the home line. team by 10 <laughs> points in that one. I'm going for a victory for Leinster by 12 points. Yeah, good. We're close. So what? 28-16 is what you're saying. What I'm going to go Leinster to win this one, 32-20. <laughs> That's 12 points, right? <laughs> I'll take 28-18. So I'm going to say 10 points to, to Leinster. Okay, so it's going to be an Irish win. Leinster will go through to the final, which means it's not good news for us as South Africans. Oh, it means gonna say. they're going to play the academy team. The one that came to South Africa against Munster, who've got nothing to play for, they'll pick their strongest team, which will mean there's a good chance that Munster will end second on the table on points difference uh, from the likes of the Stormers and the Sharks. And that would ensure them a home semi final if they get through their home quarter final. You're saying shout for Toulouse if you're a South African fan. Excuse me? You're saying if you're a South African fan, shout for Toulouse. Shout for it to lose, but it's not going to happen. I thought you said shout for it to lose or shout, shout for, for them to, to lose. lose. <laughs> okay. Shout for Leinster to lose. Shout for to lose. Uh, Leinster to win. The other one, La Rochelle, I know you love those guys. Oh, I love them. Uh, you love them love because him. of a Raymond Rule and a Dylan Lates. La Rochelle are playing against Racine. Four plays six. That's in the top 14. Four league points separate the two. They're not playing for whatever reason. Someone will tell us. They're not playing at uh, Racine's home ground which makes a massive difference. Yep. And that's why you're going for a La Rochelle win. I'm going for La Rochelle. I believe in what uh, Ronan Nagara is doing there. I feel like they've got the game to win uh, playoff matches. And, uh, and like you said, I back, uh, back the South African Boykies. I back uh, Vian Liebenberg, Dylan Leitz and Ray Rule to and, do the magic. And La Rochelle have been there before and cocked it up uh, in the last couple of years. Yep. Uh, they were building a very good side. Uh, they got to playoff time, came unstuck. I thought they dismantled the uh, sales sharks quite emphatically, uh, which tells you why a lot of those those sales sharks players uh, may be out on South Africans may be on their way out as well. A bit disappointed with the pack effort because six of the starting pack were South Africans and they're very good players. Yeah, 
But I mean, to that point though, we said there were only two English teams in the quarterfinals, both of them pretty well stacked with South African talents. So if those guys are leaving, I mean... And both got pumped. And both, well, look, they lost in the playoffs, but they were there. But they got pumped. Yes, they did. Leicester took a, a beating. Sales Sharks took a beating. So you've got La Rochelle to beat Racine. Racine, very much uh, a French team at the moment. Uh, Trevor Nyakani was starting off the bench. He's had some success there. It'll be interesting to see how he goes in, in this uh, semi-final. But who have you got to win there? By how much? Well, I'm going to take La Rochelle and I'm going to take them by four. I'm going to go with La Rochelle by 11. I mean, you made it sound like you weren't supporting them. Now you've got well, them by I'm 11. I'm not supporting them. I think they're a better side. Okay. And I'm telling you now that Raymond Rule will score and Dylan Lates will have an outstanding game. Love watching those lads play in Europe and uh, love watching them play in the top 14. Raymond Rule's alternate between win and center. And Dylan Lates, it's just, I think, one of the most talented footballers yeah, uh, in the last five, six years in South Africa. A guy that I felt could have played a lot more test rugby. Maybe his versatility was what counted against him, but uh, really good uh, at 15, really good on the win, and very capable at playing at 10 as well. And if you're looking at kind of players and the Stormers and that, you know, bringing a guy like Dylan Lates back in the next two years would have been great. Point, yeah, yeah, that kind of player. I think him in this current Stormers setup, sure, he would have thrived. Fabulous. Eh? Yeah. Thrived, and he would have thrived in a dual role of playing off 10 and 15. So Dylan Lates, Raymond Rule, and Liebenberg, we wish you well. Uh, Trevor? Could be a tough one for you. Uh, there's no South Africans in the Leinster side <laughs> at all. <laughs> Under Flair is not South African. He's all Irish of Dutch descent. And in the Toulouse side, well... Reynold Alstead. Reynold Alstead. And uh, not too much going there with South African contingents. But it's going to be great, Rugger. Really do tune in on Saturday and Sunday. And then let's not forget our own Curry Cup competition. No midweek games this, uh, this week because there's no URC. But there is a great round of Curry Cup uh, over the weekend, and your pick of the games? Uh, well, we've got Pumas Western Province on Friday night. Western Province desperate for a win to bounce back. Pumas will be itchy to to uh, record a win against uh, Province at home. And then we've got on Saturday uh, the Cheetahs take on the Sharks in Bloom. Obviously, unbeaten Cheetahs looking to keep their record intact, followed by the Bulls facing the Lions. And then we take the Pumas at home. They've been very good. I mean, they dismantled the Sharks last, last week. They also got the win, if I'm correct, against Province at the Cape Town Stadium. Uh, the big one for me, obviously, in Durban. It's always a trial match for the Cheetahs players. They go there and they get signed by the Sharks the next year. <laughs> but uh, two players who won't be signed by the Sharks oh. are their two best players, Franz Stein and Ruan Pina. Yep. They went straight from school to the Sharks, played many, many a game there. I wrote a piece for the Sunday Times uh, last piece. Sunday. Just watching their attitude last Friday night against the Lions, 75th minute. And one point in the game, and these two senior statesmen of the game were so passionate about kicking to the corner getting the try, kicking the next penalty and getting the win in front of no fans. There was no one there that I could see on the telly. 38 and 35 years respectively. 742 first-class matches between them. Yes. They've played all over the world. They're icons wherever they've played. They've won uh, three World Cups between the two of them. 159 tests combined. And there they were, just spurring on youngsters, some of them who weren't even born when they made their yeah. provincial debuts and when they left school. So Doing it all for the right reasons. Yeah, and a shout-out to Fran Stein, a shout-out to Ron Pino and the Cheetahs. And every year we say it, eh? you may have your favorite team, and it's the Cheetahs, and you may have your favorite team, but I'll tell you now, your second favorite team is the Cheetahs, and they continue to do it. They continue to produce wonderful young talent. But this time they've done it with two born and bred boys from uh, Bloemfontein that never played Jeez. for the Cheetahs in their early years and have only come back in the last year to kind of complete this, the, the, the cycle of their professional career. And my goodness, what an impact uh, Franz Stein and uh, Ron Pino have had on the Cheetahs. Yeah. So I'm the fairy tale is that the Cheetahs stay unbeaten, they make it to the final, they host yep. the final, and they actually win the Curry Cup. I mean, it would be a fairy tale ending, like you say. And uh, notch up another Curry Cup. For as I said, they are the Cinderella story of the Curry Cup. But for the likes of Francis Stein and Ron Pina, they play into the early hours of the morning. And don't put it past these two guys being there again in the season 2022-23. <laughs> Zales, it's been a pleasure. Nice, Mark. And let's hope that there's no cocked up penalty shootouts this weekend. It's not soccer. It's a rugby union, for God's sake. I agree.